Thank you for joining us for the next video in our on-demand MollyCoat 101 webinar series. Today, we will be covering the anti-friction coatings. In this overview, we will cover in detail what the AFCs, or anti-friction coatings, are, how they differ from other conventional lubricants, and the typical applications where an AFC can be a premier solution. Today's presentation will be delivered by William Fick, a lubricants application engineer on the MollyCoat team at DuPont. Will, please take it away. So first, I'd like to start off by <clears throat> talking about Mollico, who we are, and a little bit about tribology. Uh, on the right side here, you can see our, what we refer to as our Mollico wheel. Uh, it has a, a nice little uh, identifying your application reminder, the, the key elements of um, selecting the right lubricant. So uh, load environment, temperature, and speed are really the four main things that we need to uh, determine which one of these product families to choose from. So around the outside, you can see we have greases, paste, oils, compounds, dispersions, and anti-friction coatings. Um, we're going to be uh, diving into the anti-friction coatings. To better understand where those are uh, best applied, uh, you need to understand a little bit about tribology. So on the left over here, we have the uh, three different friction regimes. Uh, there's boundary friction, mixed friction, and hydrodynamic friction. Um, hydrodynamic friction is where we're able to have a separation of the two substrates, uh, typically due to low loads and high speed applications. On the boundary friction side, uh, we usually have high loads, uh, low speed applications where we're going to have um, surface to surface contact and getting separation is going to be difficult. And then in the middle, we have mixed friction, which is where you have everything in between. So we're going to focus on the boundary friction side, which is typically where you're going to use pastes and AFCs. This is a brief introduction to what uh, Malico AFCs are. So uh, an, an AFC is uh, comprised of a solvent, solid lubricants, which make up roughly 30 to 80 percent, depending on the formulation, a binder, and whatever additives might be needed for that specific um, requirement of that AFC. So once the, the curing process happens, uh, the, the solvent actually uh, flashes off and you end up with a very thin coating. Uh, you can kind of think of this as uh, a paint where you remove the pigment and instead replace it with solid lubricants. What these lubricants uh, can do is provide a very durable dry film uh, and protect and a certain level of corrosion protection. Uh, they're able to resist dust and contamination, so uh, this is one area where it excels over a wet solution where you might be um, in a high con contamination environment where it's going to lead to your grease not uh, providing the proper lubrication. Uh, it's also been known to solve MBH uh, issues uh, related to stick slip in many applications. Another benefit of an AFC is that they're fully activated or fully active even when uh, prolonged shutdowns occur. So if you need a solution that only fires once every year or every 10 years and you need to know that it's going to reliably work, an AFC is a great solution in this area. So let's focus a little bit more about the end of the AFC film curing. So there's different methods of, of curing. There's air cure, UV cure, heat cure, and then flash ovens. Um, the application method plays a strong influence into the, the total cost of the solution. So that's something to always be aware of. Uh, the actual material cost um, only makes up roughly 20% of the total cost of using an AFC. It's very critical that you have great surface preparation. So uh, about 55% of the cost goes into this. Um, and then the actual application cost is about 25%. Uh, this is why we always recommend that uh, when utilizing an AFC, especially a heat cured product, that you work with um, some type of coder who specializes in applying Molly Coat. And these can be applied in many different methods, uh, and we'll get a little bit more in, into that detail uh, in, a, in the slides moving forward. But there's uh, spraying, dip spinning, centrifuge, brushing, roll coating, even screen printing in some applications. For any uh, prototype needs, uh, we're fully equipped at our Mollico uh, facility to do um, different prototyping. So let's look at the, the AFC pretreatment <coughs> pre -treatment process. Um, so uh, in order to have a very effective coating, 
Uh, the pretreatment, as I said before, is very critical. Um, you want to make sure that you decrease uh, the surface at the very least, but we also recommend things like sandblasting, phosphating, uh, anodizing acid, uh, different detergent washings. Um, there's many different methods that can be used. Um, all in all, it's very important that you have a surface that the uh, um, the AFC is actually going to adhere to because that's going to be the first place that you could potentially see a, um, a failure. So uh, down below, we have based on different substrates what we recommend uh, for steel, phosphating, uh, zinc or mag manganese, aluminum, anodizing, phosphating, uh, alkaline detergent wash, and um, so on with the different uh, substrates. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. So <clears throat> based on your, your application method, um, different viscosity levels might be um, preferred in order to make the uh, that process easier. Um, so low viscosity and friction coatings are, are great for the spraying, brushing, dipping, and dip spinning. And then we have the high viscosity uh, and friction coatings for things like screen printing. Um, so these these coatings can be applied to uh, surfaces of very um, unique geometries in thick coatings. When uh, selecting an AFC, one of the the main things that you can you can uh, select is the the actual solid lubricants that are being utilized inside of that antifriction coating. So one big thing to look at is the load carrying capacity of these different lubricants. Uh, usually, low load applications we uh, lean toward the PTFE side, uh, graphite, and then MOS2 moving up to the higher load. Uh, below you can see the the coefficient of friction based on the loading. Uh, in the red we have the PTFE and in the blue we have MOS2. You can see that the uh, at the very low side that you do see better uh, friction performance out of the PTFE. However, once you get to about 75, maybe 80 uh, kgs in this test, uh, the, the friction actually starts to kind of go up uh, for PTFE coatings as the MOS2 just continuously gets better as load is increased. So knowing that load that your uh, application is going to be in is how we can really get you the best performance. So why and where to use? Uh, well, AFCs have the advantage that they reduce friction. So anywhere that you need to reduce friction, uh, prevent stick slip, if you you have a specific application where it's not desired to have any buildup of uh, contamination or you just want lifelong lubrication an afc is a great uh, a great tool to use some of the benefits include the reliability um, there's no uh, in many cases there's not really a need to reapply like i said lifelong lubrication low MBH, uh, some of the coatings perform well with the anti-corrosion. Uh, they're all very good with wear resistance and durability. Uh, some of the places that we commonly see these used are in oil and gas, food and beverage, agricultural and construction, appliances, exercise equipment. Really the list is uh, kind of just as large as you want to make it. So that's everything I have on AFCs.